Greetings! I am Zarek, and today I am here to tell you about my cloth scavenger build. Cloth prices went on the rise today, and I am not paying them. So I decided to reassign one of my tailors to be a cloth hunter. Next, I need to figure out where to farm the cloth. Look, I'm shy, I'm an introvert. I am mainly a solo farmer, so open world group farming is never my forte, and I bet some of you are the same way. So I have found the solution to the cloth formula. Ask yourselves, where is a location or many locations of places with which there are large clusters of humanoids that have a higher chance of dropping cloth and you have a guarantee of looting every single slain enemy? The answer is follower dungeons. Another perk to these dungeons is instead of being a round robin style of looting corpses for your chance at cloth, you get to loot every single corpse. All of them. And with this cloth scavenging build, you'll be getting cloth. I wish it was more and very often, but cloth drops still seem pretty low. But with Dawnweave and Duskweave being over 200 gold each right now, this is the way to go if you want to save gold on your crafts or sell the cloth yourself. So I will now go over the build, which you can go whichever way first. It depends on what way you think is more profitable for you. First, I went Textile Treasures for more drop chance, 30 points. Then I went the Dawn and Duskweave drop rate route, because even at bronze rate, they were more than 100 gold per one. And it's also variety rather than going all in on one cloth type, because you don't want to get locked in on one type just in case that one type is going down in price. And lastly, I went quality fabric, which you want to collect the different tiers of cloth as well for bigger profits. From my testing, it appears that the higher tier cloth dropped does not replace the lower tier cloth drops. So in this way, you are actually gaining more cloth once you unlock the higher tiers. The ways you can farm for these knowledge points are actually fairly easily. The first way you can get them is to do first crafts in your recipe tab with Taylor. The second way is to collect knowledge point items found in the open world. There are two in each zone. I will leave coordinates in the description for each one. The add-on TomTom is required for these coordinates. I will leave a link to that add-on in the description as well. These items will give three knowledge points each. Since your cloth scavenger won't be a primary crafter, you can freely use your acuity on the tailoring skill book found in the crafting orders building on the merchant. Just be sure to pick up your quest to receive your free materials bag. Inside will be 300 acuity and a small variety of mats so of the type of the bag that you selected. This skill item will give 10 knowledge points. There is another knowledge point item that is purchasable but with catch in the City of Thread's open world area. I will leave the coordinates of this vendor in the description. This knowledge item costs 685 cash, which is some sort of erected currency. You can earn cash in different ways in Ajkahed, but you can also use the currency transfer function to transfer currency from another character. Just make sure to have cash on the current character that you're on first before attempting to make a transfer. Cash is dropped by rares, wax globs, world quests, and treasures in Ajkahet. This item gives 10 knowledge points. And finally, the final way you can earn knowledge points is by completing patron orders in the crafting orders tab. These are crafting orders made by NPCs. Just hover your cursor over the treasure box to see if the completion reward has a knowledge point item. These items give 2 knowledge points each. Okay, now Let's go over the dungeons that I have found to be lucrative in cloth and what dungeons to avoid. First, Cinderbrew Meadery. Do not go here. The entire instance is bugged, literally. It is full of humanoids, but they do not drop cloth, not at all. And the City of Threads. It's actually okay of a dungeon to farm for cloth, but the trash packs are tiny and fairly far spaced, making it very inefficient. Okay. Now on to the actual dungeons that are worth a scrap. First is the Rookery. It's short and it's sweet. And remember, keep damage on the trash and loot as you pull and damage them. The AI can handle up to 2-3 to three packs at a time. 
How much time that is required for you to help them depends on how geared you are. I would say that if you are below 560, pull 2-3 to three picks at a time. If you are 560 plus, always have 3 pulled and another as soon as you feel like a pack has been taken out. I did get a blue drop in here, but on my server they aren't worth too much anymore, so it won't mess with the gold per hour too much. You only need to pull up to the second boss before you need to leave to requeue. If you want to pull the trash in the boss room, it is completely up to you. Okay, the reason why I pull trash this way is if I pull all the way to one side and then decide to cross over and pull the other side for the trash mobs, one of the NPC AI fellows in my party will pull the boss too early and, um, I won't get enough DPS off before the big laser comes out. I would rather to try to kill the boss while the laser is out rather than when it decides to rush backwards to the AI group. Why is this? Well, because it's just gonna rush possibly away from me and make the run take longer because it decided to rush a NPC rather than me. Now down here, I pull everything. No surprise. Now while they're fighting, I'll pull more. And then I'll loot. I'll help out a little bit. Go down the hallway and I'll pull more. And then more. And now depending on whether or not you are more geared than I, you would go and pull even more. Because you can see that their health pools are stable right now. And here's how much I got within an hour's worth of this brute. 19,646 gold per hour for one hour of doing this route. This one is surprising, but the Dawnbreaker is actually pretty good per cloth. It has a higher drop rate of Dawnweave and Duskweave, and the AI can bug out significantly. It's clear the AI was assigned places to teach players the safest places to land and proceed to the dungeon. How Blizzard wanted players to, but you know, we are here for efficient cloth farming. You kill the mobs as per usual, there aren't very many packs up on the boat. My packs are very condensed. As you can see, I glitch out and glitch through the boat, and it's just as glitchy of a dungeon as in any other group. The NPCs will spawn when you land. They don't actually have their own flying mounts. It's just an illusion. Fly out and fly in. And then we fly out, gather orbs because we're bored, and we fly back in. I like to land here to start my uh, pro progression down to the cathedral because I land on top of a group of mobs and then I pull out from here while my team, my handy dandy team, uh, do damage to the mobs and I help out some and I go and pull more. Oh, and also always remember to loot. You want to pull the steps of the cathedral, the pack just below the steps, uh, and all of the packs on the other side of this path.
The next big group area is right down here, just outside of Town Square, near the inn where the other lieutenant is. You just want to round them up? Gather them up for your AI companions. Let them DPS them down, gather more up, and keep looting. Just make sure you do not pull the boss. So single target, and if you want this extra pack next to the lieutenant, pull the lieutenant and DPS them down. Dawnbreaker runs take 10 minutes to do. They can take less if you're more geared, but if you do this route, you will get approximately 20,000 gold per hour. Next, we have the City of Echoes, or Arakara for short. This one will feel terrible, as the trash mobs that drop the cloth are mostly on the bridge after the first boss. You have to slaughter the beginning trash and the first boss to make it to the clothy goodness. Now, for the first spider, you need to always make sure you interrupt the fear, which I believe is like horrifying scream or something like that. This first part is, I'm sorry to say, always a pain if you do decide to farm this route. There are cooking mats, yes, but in order to get your cloth, you have to go through this part. There's no skip yet. You have to kill the first boss to proceed through the wall spikes behind the boss here. Thankfully in the follower dungeon, the boss goes down pretty quickly. One thing I would have to say is that the AI for these packs will have a higher priority set for the alarm beetles. For my warlock, I tried to get the beetles to go off to call for reinforcements as much as I can. More mobs, more cloth. But I have to stagger DPS cooldowns and defensives to live. I'm going to pull the first couple of packs to keep my AI busy. Now, there's an alarm beetle here. I'm going to make sure that I pull the pack and pull it back and then pull this pack next to it to make sure that my to make sure my fell guard is off the pack so that the alarm beetle remains unharmed while it calls for reinforcements. And as I've learned from this battle, if that one alarm beetle goes off, the entire left side of alarm beetles go off and it effectively clears that entire side. I would suggest Doing that strategy if you are more geared. I barely made it out. I make it look easy, but I barely made it out. <laughs> For this right hand side, I should have went ahead and started the alarm beetles. But instead, I did not. My warlock is only 579. You only need to slay trash up to the second boss before leaving and re -queuing. And after one hour of doing this route, I got almost 23,000 gold per hour. The next best dungeon would have to be Dark Flame Cleft. No, 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 no. Hear me out. You only need to do the cobalt portion of this dungeon. No darkness stuff. Those are not humanoids. They will therefore not drop cloth. In this one, you need to slay two bosses as you leave after killing the pack just before the Kobold King. For this one, you can find surprise kobolds in patches where it looks like there are no kobolds at all. Always walk over those so that you can get extra kobolds. Extra kobolds are good. Extra cloth is always good. There's an alternative route you can take with this one, and you can pull up to the first boss instead, and then reset after that. That path might be more efficient than the one that I have suggested. I wanted to list how many humanoids you can farm in this dungeon. 
For this boss, just focus the boss. You don't have to focus on the ads at all. You can AoE to pad your damage. Have fun with it. But if you want the boss to go down faster, use only single target spells. But you know what? It's a game. Have fun with it, man. This room, I don't think the flames or the candle people, the big wax giants, I don't think they will drop cloth. But I pull them anyway because I like to see the room cleared. The reason why I cleared the second boss is because after the second boss are more kobolds to clear. Which means more cloth, but maybe it's just not as efficient. So refer to the other route that I have mentioned. After one hour of farming this route, I got 24,000 gold per hour in cloth. Stone Vault honestly surprised me. I didn't think it would actually drop this much cloth. Annoying mechanics would have to be the knockbacks and the fear. So the first boss room, try to pull the two golems in the center of the room as the second pull. As you can see, the RP for the boss is already done, and we go in. Now pull that, the pack with this garden, and then you head to the southwest towards the forge speakers. Of course, loot as you go. Always remember to loot. Never forget to loot. These gosh darn pulverizing robots and their pulverizing jumps. Now in this room, you want to pull this entire room, but not all at once. Pull a few packs at a time. I have tried to pull the entire room because I thought that they could handle it. For some reason, the tank likes to go deer in headlights mode and uh, just let themselves die because I have actually Soulstone the tank before, and they just stand there and do nothing. But doing this quick route, I get 26,000 gold per hour. Lastly, I am sure it is no one's surprise that Priory of the Sacred Flame is the best dungeon for gold value. The run takes a little longer, but you could vary up your own route. I found this way will be better for gold per hour for requeuing. Now, the reason why I told you to make your own route is because this dungeon is big. It has many different paths you can take. You can go to the right, you can go to the left, you can kill a mini boss, you can decide not to kill a mini boss. It all depends on whether or not you are geared or you know the mechanics of the fights of the mini bosses that add to the first boss's mechanics. Now, the way that I like to go is I like to go to the left. And I would like to kill two mini bosses when I do so, or skip a mini boss because this, the first mini boss decides to not engage and just sit by the fountain. 
when I first ran this dungeon, I used to kill every single pack in the dungeon. All the way up to the last boss. And it just became slowly known to me that this was not efficient. I noticed that I got far fewer cloth drops in the cathedral area. So I decided to clear up to the second boss only. And I noticed that I got far more cloth from going to the left than going to the right. So I would only go to the left and clear that up instead of just clearing the entire upper tier entirely. Because I used to do that and found out that that was just not efficient either. Runs used to take like 27 minutes. That... That was not... That was not good. Another couple of packs you probably don't need to pull are the ones with the uh, Lynx Riders. I feel like that those packs don't drop as much cloth. They just drop more basically beef than cloth. Current auction house prices, I believe, Dawnweave is just above 150 gold each, and Duskweave is around 300 gold each. It could change in the near future at any time, as volatile as the market can be. Also for this boss, if you feel like you're taking too much damage, when you see the Caspar hurl spear, just sidestep to the left or right and the spear will completely miss you. The spear is a bleeding tick. It's a skill shot made by the first boss. And after one hour of this route, I got almost 35,000 gold per hour in cloth. And I guess basically beef. That is what I have gathered and tested, so you didn't have to. I hope you liked the video, and please subscribe if you would like to know when more of my videos are released. Zerik out.